On the next episode of World in America, we'll meet the Czech Americans. First, we'll meet the Simons as they share their love for both Czech Republic and the USA. Later, we'll learn how to put together a Czech puppet. We'll also taste the delicious meals of Czech cuisine by way of Queens, New York. Last but not least, we'll check out the fun-packed Czech Street Festival. It's all coming up on the next World in America. They kind of don't stand out. They meld in fairly well. The Czechs are actually used as uh, spies. They make good spies. You know, if you take a Russian and try to make him a spy in America, he stands out like a sore thumb, whereas a Czech melts in and, and works as a spy better than a Russian. The smaller the country, the bigger the national pride. And I would say that's true for Czechs. You know, there's a Czech saying that, that you know, every Czech is a musician, so they're very you know, musically oriented. It's located smack in the middle of Europe, bordering on Germany and to the west and uh, Slovakia to the east and Austria to the south and Poland to the north. I would uh, compare it to, you know, countryside in Massachusetts, Romania, even like in, in the northeast. That reminds me very much of Czech landscape. Descended from Slavic tribes, Czechs as a people have been inhabiting Central Europe for almost 1,500 years. The modern history of the Czech Republic first begins with Czechoslovakia. Following the collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire after the First World War, Czechs regained their independence in 1918, and the new name of Czechoslovakia was adopted to reflect the union of the Czech and Slavic territories that were merged together. In a 1948 coup d'etat, Czechoslovakia became a communist-ruled state, closely aligned with the USSR. Along with a few other countries, the USSR invaded Czechoslovakia in 1968. And as the years passed, the Czechs grew more and more weary with the communist regime. Finally, in 1989, under the Velvet Revolution, the communist regime collapsed, peacefully dissolving Czechoslovakia into two independent states, Slovakia and the Czech Republic in 1993. So the regime fell in, in November 89 and uh, was immediately replaced by, you know, by, by capitalists. And, and the Czechs really quickly assimilated to, into the you know, West, West European uh, community. Uh, so, so what was about 15 million you know, population country, Czechoslovakia, now, now the Czech part is about 10 million, Slovakia about five, I guess, maybe a little more. As the nation went through multiple military occupations and regime changes, there has been a number of political migrations out of the country. Some of these Czech migrations were directed towards the United States. First big wave was uh, after 1848. The second big wave was during the war, as people were uh, getting away from Hitler. Uh, and then 40, 1948, when, when the communists took over, a lot of people had to leave. And then 1968, when, uh, so, and then the reason was, was always the same, was oppression, political oppression. Meet the Simons. With two beautiful children, Jacob and Denise are both successful parents and professionals. While Denise is born and raised in the States with her roots in Italy, 
it is Jacob who brings in the Czech flair into the family. My name is uh, Jacob Simon. I live in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm a pediatric infectious disease uh, specialist. My name is Denise Kozakowski. I'm married to Jacob Simon. Um, my training is in folklore and I currently teach mind-body well-being in the Baltimore area. I'm Sophia Simon. I'm 11 years old and I'm in sixth grade. My name is Nate Simon. I go to seventh grade. I was born in uh, Czechoslovakia at the time, 1970, and came here in 79 um, as a nine-year-old uh, boy. So basically grew up and, uh, and was trained. Um, my entire education was here in the U.S. A successful doctor, Jacob is proud to be an American and at the same time very cognizant about what attracts the Czechs to the States. This country took us in and, and really my, my value system is consistent with, with uh, the freedom of speech that America has had much longer, uh, the Czech Republic now has as well, fortunately. You can get a good education and you can uh, do, do a lot of things. You, basically, there, there aren't many limits to what you can do. Education is not limited to schooling alone. In the Simon household, the children are also brought up with a holistic approach. Both Nate and Sophia practice music and chess. Right now, I'm going through my book by Aaron Nimzovich, which is about chess. And I'm just setting up the position in the book. I like chess a lot. My dad taught me chess when I was little. Just two weekends ago, I went to a chess tournament, the first one in a long time. And then I went chess crazy. And then for the weekend, I've just been studying chess every day, all day. At first I played the piano and my brother and I both went to um, a very, very, uh, like really, really nice piano teacher. I didn't like the piano so I decided to switch to the harp and so my mom, they, they looked into it and then I remember the day I got my harp and we went down to this harp, harp um, studio in Philadelphia. We bought the harp and now I'm taking lessons from um, my harp teacher who's actually Czech. There is no better way to experience a culture than at its home of origin. This is exactly what the Simons did a few years ago. We spent an entire uh, year, so it was interesting for me to live there as an adult and experience all the different culture, cultural events. You know, there's a festival uh, every month, basically. Something's going on, all kinds of cool things. It takes no time to be just surrounded by woods and beautiful water. They go back pretty much every year and uh, you know they express an interest. I really fell in love with Czech culture and um, the traditions. It's still very connected to the land. So everyone knows each other there and it's a lot more nature-y. They have a lot of trees. Exposing them to that culture and that history uh, and where their parents come from is, I think, a good thing. Tak poslouchej, jestli pak někdo natáká, se zeptá, teďko tohle uvidíme, jestli to bude znát. V jakém roce postavili Karlu v most? Čtyři náct s dušemi utonolejích. As the children picked up the Czech language during their visit, now it's the continuous responsibility of the parents to nurture it. We decided in the early years to speak English as a family with the intention to live in the Czech Republic. Na Karlově mostě stojí socha bájného knížete Brunsvíka. We went there consciously knowing that they're going to pick up the language very quickly. Okay, the concept was that, that a child can pick it up in about six months. Chceš to přečíst, Savinko? Aby most nehodna... neodnesla, přečíst všechno. Neodnesla první velká voda. I'm not fluent in Czech, 
but I can understand some of it. Co udělali? Je na tom mostě postavili. I speak a little Czech. I learned it from my dad when he was in Czech Republic. Stavitele Petra. We made a commitment to read in Czech every night for the whole entire summer, and we did. And we read a book called um, Ferda Mravenec. Ten stojí tady na začátku mostu. A jeho historka je. Na Karlově mostě stojí socha bájného knížete Brunsvíka. It's very hard to maintain. I either push concepts, you know, in English, or I'm speaking to them and I'm pushing this obscure language, you know, at the level of a three or four year old. In cherishing and practicing their native language despite being here, the Simons achieve a healthy balance representing the best of both their American and Czech essences. The Czech Centre in New York does exist for 15 years in the city. The main mission is to promote Czech Republic through cultural events to the American public. One such event is an exhibit highlighting through photographs the life of famous Czech filmmaker Karel Zeman, who had a great positive impact on other famous filmmakers around the globe. He was one of the most important Czech film directors and he was one of the few who influenced filmmakers around the world. His work inspired Steven Spielberg or Tim Burton. He did a film uh, on dinosaurs in 1956 and he really influenced generations of kids and adults in the Czech Republic. Another event organized by the Czech Center that drew a crowd of mostly young ones was a workshop on the celebrated marionette puppet tradition. We have a workshop with an experienced puppet maker where the kids can build their own puppet. My name is Marcela Burdova. I live in Prague, in Czech Republic. And marionettes I do for 15 years. It started when my kids were small. Uh, it was a good opportunity to do something uh, with kids at home. We had like three rooms in our house, and in one room was puppets. All, all over the room were puppets only. There's a hundred year tradition of Czech puppetry where people used to build their own puppets and play theatre performances at home with the puppets. These characters are typical Czech characters. Parents use them for educate their kids. So, for example, Kašpárek was uh, like a joker, but on the other hand they kids uh, know that they have to eat spinach or they have to go to the bed early and so on. I put it inside the body and I need a nail and I put the nail in it. You have to uh, create molds and you have to paint it and you have to create the bodies and it's a lot of stuff and suit, uh, suits, costumes, it's, it's quite difficult. This is Kira, the mom, and this is Mani, the daughter. She's just a regular girl. She goes to school, she takes care of all the animals and plants and all that. My younger son came with me, he's eight, and he came here with his friend, so they both sat together and made puppets. My puppet is called Nicholas. He's a wizard. 
It was a very nice day. I didn't realize that so many kids came, so it was a bit messy for me, but still I think they enjoyed it a lot. We just want to introduce this old tradition which survived through now, which is alive also in the United States, and we want to show one of the richest sides of the Czech Republic. Located in Queens, New York, Zlata Praha cooks all of the delicious Czech dishes to perfection. My name is George Sukhanek and I am the owner and establisher, even the builder of uh, restaurant Czech and Slovak Zlata Praha. Zlata Praha means in translation Golden Prague. We'll begin our journey into the Czech cuisine with potato pancakes. We grind some raw potatoes. We put some salt in it. Some pepper. Eggs. Then we mix it up. Then we add up some all-purpose flour. Garlic. We're adding up Majoran, which we even have a, the European Marian, which has a little bit stronger taste. You fry them first on the outside and you give them a little, couple more minutes so they get cooked a little bit inside. Here's the typical Czech pancake, right? I bought this building in 1981 and I start to uh, f actually finish my dreams. The dish with the biggest shoulders and heaviest culinary artillery is the slowly cooked sauerbraten. The key is to prepare it with lots of love. It's a meal which is very uh, time consuming, like most of the uh, Czechoslovakian meal. So we have to make a base, cut all root vegetable, like a carrots, parsnips. Cut the onions, okay? The onions you add a little bit later. When you will put it all together, the onions will start to burn before the root vegetable will get ready to cook. The spices, it's bay leaves, whole uh, spice and whole black pepper. And I put a little bit uh, pickling spice. So now we got the extract, so we, we strain it. So next step is to prepare the meat, okay? We put a little bit salt. White pepper is be better because it's a uh, light sauce. Now you put mustard and then you put it to the refrigerator, rest for 20, 30 minutes. We have to burn the meat on the outside so it stays juicy on the inside. Now when we glaze the meat, so we have to put it to the base, okay, which is boiling. We boil over an hour, we're going to add a little bit of milk, sour cream. After the boiling, we add a little bit heavy cream. To finish the sauce, to be strained. I am going to serve it with the sauerbraten sauce. As a topping we put a slice of lemon and cranberry sauce. I want to build it up the way so every Czechoslovakian comes to our restaurant and will find peace of home and will feel like home.
live music, kids' dances, food, fun, and a special pantomime performance. Once a year, Czech Americans take it to the streets of New York City, celebrating their rich culture. We are happy to actually organize our 11th uh, Czech Street Festival. This is a festival started in 1998 and this became a major celebration of Czech heritage and contemporary culture. I believe our goal is to really introduce Czech culture for the American public. We try to bring the most interesting projects and people and introduce them to American audiences. A contemporary jazz band took the stage and warmed up the rain-showered audience with their beautiful melodies. When the Czech children presented their newly learned songs and dances, they mesmerized their parents and others in attendance. Len Kapiklikova is a seasoned Czech-American pantomime artist who not only provided a lot of fun for the young audience members, but also gave them a sense of this traditional performance art. When I came to this country, I didn't speak any English, so I started to teach pantomime, and that was a way to communicate. I created this piece uh, some while ago and uh, they are just based on classical pantomime and they are just some basic illusions which are very easy for children to understand. I just feel that it is very important to be part of this event to get my craft uh, to the young one, to the young generation so they will not forget their roots. From traditional puppetry to pantomime, from music to dance, and from solid family values to extremely delicious dishes, the Czech Americans hailing from Prague and beyond are definitely a vibrant part of the American mosaic.